The galaxy is burning. Brother fights brother, and treason splits the Imperium of Man. This is the Age of Darkness. Whether you're a warrior of the Legiones Astartes, an adept of the Mechanicum, or just a mere mortal in a universe of madness, you'll find a place here. Welcome to the Remembrancer's Retreat, coming to you from within the depths of the Vengeful Spirit. Hello and welcome to the Remembrance of the Tree. Oh, uh, this shit. is awesome. For me. And uh, we are a solid 20 minutes into this recording. <laughs> I'm here today with Jesse, Stephen, Will. How y'all doing? Oh, well, uh, do let's that. go ahead and reenact everything we just did ah. um, as if it's organic and all that. Oh, <laughs> natural. Funny jokes. <laughs> Stephen, what are we talking about is today? Is the Emperor a god? Fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what should happen to every person who wants to have that conversation. <laughs> Just thrown directly into the sun. Load them up on a ship. Throw them into the sun. Folks, I'm here to tell you Stephen is wrong, and I'm about to give you my new no-nos of why he's wrong. But first, tell us about Harry Potter. No, oh. don't tell us about Harry Potter. I don't Harry know what Potter you're talking again. about. I've, yes, I, I saw fair, Harry Potter when it like came out. A solid out. half of that was Harry Potter related. Yeah, why would true. we talk about yeah. Harry Potter? That movie's hella old, and I saw it when it first came out when I was a child. I never read the books, though. Naturally. And what house so. are you in? I'm not in a house because You're I'm a not peasant. a wizard. Yep. You're a peasant. peasant. All right. I think they call those muggles, don't they? Nope. That's... I'm not a nerd. I just play. I just roll dice occasionally. I'm not like a real nerd. I'm a poser most you, you of the know, time. You know, the one thing, though, when this happens, I always look at a bright size. Like, well, at least we didn't puff. go for another 45 fucking minutes. Like we did I that realized. one time? <laughs> before I realized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just the so you know, buttons, it's not on. there's Although, a whole half hour of content that was made. That you'll never get to experience. Never get to experience. Ever. No matter how However, much you I, donate. I will say that I, I bear some small part in the blame. Jesse Stephen as ever told running the cricket this story. with the soundboard. And yep. y'all missed it. Um, so and I Austin, looked over. You saw something, but I looked say over. Something. Yeah, you yeah. saw it. You yeah. owned it. You it didn't say anything. Because I looked over and I'm like, okay, he's supposed to press a red button. Like there's a big red button for when there's, we're recording. Right and there. I saw a large green button. And then another button that is red that apparently is what fucks Jesse into thinking he's recording when he's not. And I was like, I'm changing the intro. I should color. mention something, but I don't want to cut into this great recording that we're making right now just mm. to mm. Uh, tell Jesse something he already knows. It's, it's mm. green now. And so uh, I nope, I was wrong. Yep. <laughs> Where's the peer check? <laughs> uh, and here yep. we are. Yep. Here, we, here are. we are. Uh, all right. So uh, we'll repeat the same question that. We did earlier. Will, what's with all this resin? Which oh, was organic at the first time. Yeah. Uh, yep. I don't know what resin you're talking about. Oh, wait. You mean the resin in front of me? So, folks. What do we have here? Looks like some preacher shields. That's cool. Yeah. I think. And, then, and then you said, what? is Insert that a contemptor? I do see a contemptor. And uh, yeah. let me tell you. What is all this about, Will? Please so, tell us. Folks, do not smack your lips in the <laughs> mic again, or I will, I will rip them off. I will rip them off of... I will mute Steven forever. Yeah. Uh, no. So here's, guys, here's what's happening. Nova 2020. It's coming. Uh, we had a war council meeting recently, and we decided that it was time for Remembrance Retreat to kind of step up and do a little bit more. You guys have been our patrons for a long time, those of you who are, and we do appreciate it. So we're going to be using that patron money to fund a project for Nova 2020, and mm -hmm. it is a charity army project. So you guys can all know that the funds you've donated are helping to be laterally transferred to other people via charity. Hopefully we'll actually be able to make more money off of this. So the idea yeah. is that we're doing a charity army. It is a 1,500-point Zone Mortalis list. Um, it uses the Zone Mortalis Rite of War. It takes a Praetor Tribune. Uh, it is all themed off of Ultramarines at the Betrayal of Kalth. Just in time for Gilliman Day. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, it'll be perfect. Uh, we've got Caesarians, Breachers, Terminators. We've got Honored Telly, Maccus. Uh, and then we've got a Praetor Tribune. And uh, it's going to be a pretty good list, I think. The list looks fun. The The bits have just arrived. We've just gone ahead and do quality control check to make sure Forge World did their quality control check. And i got to say, guys, uh, out of all the pieces we've ordered, there's a single air bubble and a single broken... Well, Mark three trim. Okay, oh, and then we broke a bunch sure. of stuff. We, we, broke, we broke a bunch of stuff. It's fine. But listen, I it, no, it arrived here. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the nicest Forge World like order. Yeah, I've there's no major mold slips or there is a bareheaded 
anything. Head in that, and it just looks so smooth. There's no ugly weirdness oh, yeah. going on with the, the old hair bear heads the from face. the face. It's just Praetorian it's upgrade sets. Yeah. Uh, so I think yeah. you guys will be seeing updates from this. Uh, I'll be keeping everybody in the loop. We're already having our builders build stuff, and then our painters will be taking it and starting to paint here soon. Uh, so straight to the elf workshop. Yeah, it's going right. to be really cool. I think you guys are going to like it. It's the Red Gobbo. Look out. We also did that joke, too. Yeah, yeah. that was a it's, good one. Look, if it's funny the first time, it's funny the next 50 times. <laughs> yep, just like you ringing those chimey bells. Hilarious. Hey, have I ever told you the cricket story? Yeah, you yeah. did actually earlier, and yeah. Jesse forgot to record it, so... <laughs> It was a small uh, so mercy. yeah, we we've got this charity army going, and I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I hope you guys are too. Hmm. Yep, I'm looking forward to it because uh, it'll be real cool once it's all painted up. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you guys thought all we did was make fun of ultramarines. Yep, it's yeah. true. And here we are. Our first charity arm is going to be an ultramarines. Yep. Painted what else are we red doing and black uh, uh, <laughs> with a bunch of no. <laughs> <laughs> it's Alpha Legion. Yeah, we're painting uh, the pink just to, just to make everybody mad. You dip it in the water and look. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. man, That'd be how crazy, crazy would that be? Wash off the beautiful Ultramarines paint scheme, and it was Alpha Legion all along. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, like, what if you had Gilman. like water activated pigments to where? Kind of like if you put like a hot water in a mug or something. It changes yeah, colors. And all of a sudden, like if you put your army in the oven. <laughs> and it comes out and it looks like ultramarine. You're across your opponent at the table. Hold up one second. There's and a you reason get like why a spray bottle, or or like like if it was water activated, right? And you mm-hmm. just had like a spray bottle, and he's like, "Can you stop getting the table wet?" And you're like, "No, this is going to be worth it. Trust Watch me. It. This is so cool." Can you just wait. A, there, there's no, a reason we why the Will is on a yeah. podcast and not like designed for Games Workshop. Yeah, they're going to be like, yeah. "Okay, get this guy the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just ruin fly, product like fly that." Fly into Nottingham immediately, sir. Sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> Uh, what else are we doing at uh, at Nova, though? Well, Austin. One quick thing I do want to talk about. I know we said we weren't going to talk about it, but Austin's had me thinking about it. And it is, so there's a big change at Nova. We're not going to dive too deep into it. But the big blam change. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. You're, it's not going to be a Warlord Fest this time. It's going to, so Correct. if you Nothing have attended. Nothing bigger than a Warhound, really. Yeah, if you have attended the big blam in the past, you will always notice for the past two years, there's been something called the mini blam. And it's where a bunch of people just get drunk on a table that is near the big blam. The big blam rejects. That's what they they call it. Yeah. But they, (laughs) and it's basically just a mega battle as opposed to a Titan battle. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's really great because that's where it was back in 2016. And I'm excited for it to come back to that. Yeah, so the the basic rundown, 2,500 points, no force org, nothing bigger than a Warhound. Yeah, that was exactly how it was last time. And he would give you uh, melt bomb tickets to tear, depending on how large. If you brought small units, you would lose melt bomb tickets. And if you brought bigger units, like if you brought a 10-man Terminator squad and a Spartan with Ferris Manus, you got an extra melt bomb ticket. But if you brought a 20-man tactical squad with an apothecary, you lost a melt bomb <laughs> because they don't want to spam s- small stuff. They want it to be an elite war kind yeah. of thing, mm-hmm. Sounds like really nice. Good excuse for me to build that Mastodon. Oh, perfect. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think it's smaller than a the party. Put all, those, put all those brand new uh, <laughs> interimpters in there. <laughs> oh, dun, dun, dun. oh, yeah. It'll, it'll be a good be Friday night. night. Oh, Good yeah, Friday the little night. plasma dudes that are coming yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, God. Whose name literally God, means murderer. That's right. Have the name thrower plasma. <laughs> yeah, I really like, I think Jesse, not Jesse, um, Robbie mentioned that the the ends of them were kind of in the style of a Volkite. So if there's a plasma that has a... Plasma going with deflagrate. Well, it wouldn't be exactly <laughs> deflagrate. Rude. It would be, I don't think so. I think it'd be too lazy to just say, oh, this also is a ray gun. Then it'd have to be like plasma grape. Or so, I don't know. It might be something like it, but the idea of it, or like you said, where it, if it had multiple firing modes of like a flamer I just or want it to a have or plasma. also have a, fla- a flame. Yeah, I don't want it to be just a plasma. To murder. Yeah. That's it. I don't want it to be just a plasma. I want it to be something else. Not only death to you, sir, but to everyone in arm's reach of you. That's yeah. what I want. Plasma flamers. And then they'll burn two friends, and then they'll burn two friends. <laughs> yep. It'll be the Oprah of plasma guns. <laughs> Look under your seat. It's a strength seven AP two hit. Congrats. Oh, Hooray. you still got to pay the taxes on it though. Strength six AP three assault two. 18 inches. You heard it here first folks. Yep. Breaking news. Yep. We'll see. I don't know. Just a shamelessly <laughs> rumor monger for the second episode <laughs> in a row. Who's <laughs> <Spaggy> bitch? Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Nope. All right. Go, but, going for broke. All right. So I guess we're we're on Nova now, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like we, we they launched the primer drafts. Keep in mind this is all draft. Everything is subject to change still, mm-hmm. guys. Um so but one thing on the draft I noticed was something that caught my eye. Y'all want to talk about this? Um, Tell us what it is. Sure. What, what, what caught, caught your, your eye? eye? I think it was like tiny spaceships. Tiny don't talk spaceships. to me like you play tiny, tiny spaceships. Tiny no, spaceships. I don't play tiny spaceships. I'm trying to hype you guys up <laughs> caught, to segue into eye. this. That's yeah. right. It's Battlefleet. No, it caught my eye. I was like, who right the hell that, plays this give me game? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what? Give me that mad, trumpet yeah. sound effect. What madman let this go? It's Battlefleet Heresy. Yeah. Get ready to don your epaulets, a monocle, and exercise a callous disregard for human life. Your app. Apple, let's, Apple like your tiny, Apple your let's. tiny, tiny Apple computers, tiny apples on your shoulders. Your tiny, those are called your applets. IPods. No, those are tiny apps. Applets. <laughs> no, those are appetizers. They're just balanced. No, on you're, giant thinking of, you're thinking of appetinis. We will have at least about. one egregiously large hat to wear. I Indeed. promise you that. Indeed. I really hope you need two people to wear that hat. It's so big. That's something like to consider. one person to well, physically again, hold the center mask Christ, and the, are possible. And the yeah. other person to walk behind them, cradling it. <laughs> cradling the brim <laughs> like a bridal train. This is a 400-gallon hat. It only holds six, though. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, yeah. so we got, we got Battlefleet Heresy. Uh, it's actually a scenario that Stephen and I dreamed up, not last year, but the year before that. Was it a fever dream? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, it, it was getting awfully hot in that <laughs> or car. Did you guys just in, go in a, on an ayahuasca hot, journey? In a hot car <laughs> on the drive back from Nova. Oh, that, yeah. That's a fever dream. Yep. Yeah. We were listening to Filk, and one yeah, thing led to another. One and, thing led to another. Um, yeah. And then last year, we didn't have any Battlefleet Heresy, because I was doing uh, the Blood Bowl tournament that goes at night, and Stephen yeah. had and some we other evening had, stuff going we on. Also, you and I had the... Um, the, the night game for the uh, War on the Webway. Yeah. So, like, literally, I had no nights free to do anything, so I didn't even think about it. And, like, multiple people came up and were like, you guys doing Battlefleet Gothic? Battle I know. Heresy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, this year, we talked. We got an actual official event. It's going to be real cool, kind of like War on the Webway. It'll be limited in number. There'll be five loyalists, five traders, 1,250-point um, fleets. We'll have a couple of loner fleets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's um, going to be some narrative shenanigans yeah. to keep it. So there'll, there'll be a couple of loner fleets. So if you play Battlefleet Gothic, I'll be able to bring my Necrons. Whatever. Yeah. Now get the fuck out of here no. with your Xeno scum. <laughs> yeah. No. This is pure. If you have Xeno Civil scum War and you want to roll dice, the rules are exactly the same. It's just the fleet lists are heresy themed. And you can use the loner fleets for that, right? Yeah. So, Perfect. you know, if you've got Eldar or Necrons or whatever, just buy a ticket, shoot us an email, say, hey, man. Like, I bought a loyalist ticket or I bought a trader ticket. I'm interested to play. Sweet. Here's your fleet. Here's the Legion you're going to be running. Go to. Bingo, bango, bongo. Should be a fun time. You're going to have two games, mm-hmm. uh, 1v1, and then a multiplayer battle. Uh, it's going to have some campaign rules. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Battlefleet Gothic or Heresy at all, uh, they have persistent fleetless. So if you play a game and your ships all get beat to shit, Next game, uh, if you don't repair them, and spoiler alert, this is going to be mere, like game two in like game terms is going to be mere hours after game one, so mm-hmm. you probably won't. Uh, your Oops. ship is just beat to shit for the next game. Yep. Uh, and we we talked about it. We, we like Battlefleet Heresy when like disengaging is a thing. Mm-hmm. Like in campaign games, one of the things you do is you're just like, all right, well, I'm just going to run. Like, can't win or like this ship is badly damaged i don't want it to be destroyed yeah so we're not gonna gonna, there's not gonna be any war to the knife during game one where you're just game two suicidally going and there there will be some shenanigans we're here to have a narrative time not Mm -hmm. a super op competitive time yep ask yourself a question what's the biggest space hulk you've ever seen on a table at once spoiler alert! one time saw a dude drop an actual boulder on the table well well, not as big as that. Yeah, it's smaller than an actual boulder, but bigger than a despoiler battleship. That was a big, that was the biggest bad hole. Yeah? That was the biggest bad hole. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um, <laughs> bring your ships for oh, space is wide and good friends are too few. Indeed. And of course, since there'll be a bunch of Battlefleet Heresy stuff And no one can going, hear you scream. No, they can't unless you're the warp sucked can. into the warp. <laughs> the warp oh, can hear you scream. You know what's uh, crazy? 
what vortex grenades generate pockets of the warp yeah yeah tiny little warp rifts i didn't know that i thought it was antimatter that would just like nope. suck nope. things away. vortex torpedoes bring people to are just vortex grenades except made to suck 12 kilometer long ships yeah it's you an icd you know what happens if you shoot a vortex grenade into a spaceship yeah, I mean, just a tiny Bulk hole in the material. Yeah, no, it's not good. Yeah, it's don't it's not do a, that. Yeah, it's a bad don't. time. That is no. not a ship to ship. Like that's not a shipboard weapon. OSHA no. does oh, yeah. not, no, not recommend that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and since we're doing Battlefleet Heresy late night, it's going to be Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Um, starts after the other events. I think it's going to go tentatively right now. I think at like seven thirty is the start time. Rolls until just after midnight. Um. But since that's going on, there'll probably be some earlier uh, in Nova evening just pick up games. Yeah, yeah. I can only I can only. Dude, assume, there's yeah. always something to do. Yeah, with there's Nova. always if, something after to do with the Nova. main events. If you just want to play Secret Hitler or something like that, or Werewolf or whatever those games mm-hmm. are, or people bring card games down or Munchkins, mm-hmm. and you just go crazy, dude. Like there's mm-hmm. gonna be yeah, it's a hell of a good do. time. And we are yeah. going to uh, we are gonna do the usual Nova Awards for you know. Yeah, you guys Fun got full stuff. prize support and everything too, which is nice. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, do we have prize support? <clears throat> yes, we do have prize support. So, um, you know, bring your most ostentatious uniforms, prepare your silver tongues. Oh man, yeah, I I'm gonna like go just stuff. to see if people wear like full military. Guard. Uh, they, people, did for, uh, they did it for the Princeps Princeps formal, they did it for the so, Princeps formal. Yeah, people were talking yep. about it like without yeah the Princeps arrive. formal. Well, not the had people do formal, it. but for yeah, I was in a tuxedo. Well, no, but I mean, there was that guy and, I know. you know, our yeah. friend, yeah, Jared, who... Who went batshit crazy. Well, Good well, Lord. Yeah. Hannibal <laughs> Interfector over there. But no, there's guys talking about dressing up for uh, Battlefleet Heresy without any prompting from Steven or I. Yep. That happened organically. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it is a gentleman's <laughs> game, and points will be awarded for, for... all kinds of things, really. All kinds of random shit. But style is foremost among them. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't matter if you have the firepower to destroy a planet if you don't look good while you're doing it. So this if you say, way. if you roll your dice and, like, take a hit of a cigarette and go, I don't give a fuck, and then you roll your dice, does nope, that nope, earn nope. you additional that's, points? That's not gentlemanly. That's ungentlemanly. Oh, so, if you you say a, something so you're like, not allowed to be a scoundrel. If you say something like, Feth the torpedoes, all ahead full. That's gentlemanly. That's gentlemanly. And you Okay, just, I think you guys are on that wanting, note, like, Imperial rather than... Pirates is what you're saying. If you, I can't yeah, show up and be like, "Ah, you the could." Torpedo. I mean, don't but we'd probably it. make you play orcs, <laughs> which again are not allowed. Yep, you're gonna play on a separate table in another room in By another yourself. Hotel. First mate, <laughs> fire the Ursus claws. Arr. Um, I am excited yeah. to see if anybody's gonna like what people are gonna bring because I know, mm-hmm. like, it, it constantly amazes me that like Stephen and I have like dreamed up this ridiculous thing, and there are people I don't know that play it. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty um, crazy. So I'm, I'm eager People to People that we don't know are making ships, like 3D printing Gloriana ships for you, for use with our rules. And mm-hmm. we have no idea who these people are. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So I'm, I'm really excited Just to see like the, those guys the, and their ships and what's going on. The magic tubes send us pictures and mm-hmm. we see them sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even though we are looking for some, uh, some fun, gentlemanly, fluffy stuff, we are going to have to uh, put a temporary ban on dueling. We don't want anyone stabbing anyone else i mean that's that's pretty hall. standard on a war footing dueling gets banned because it's just a waste of good officers when you know tell that to mr yulanti he don't care he yeah, stabs well, anyone that wasn't a duel that was supposed to have happened you know it i know it <laughs> he knows it and now we're talking about a book I, that's been out of production for like 15 years yeah, I'm, so I'm i don't know what we, we're talking me about. and will are lost civilize yourselves go read execution hour so many books and so little time. Is that like part of the Harry Potter series? <laughs> <laughs> if we say yes, will you read it? Absolutely not. If I didn't determine me even more, and I, I will definitely not go read it. Did Did you like Gaunt's Ghosts? You'll like Execution Hour. Didn't read Gaunt's Ghosts. You listened to it. No, not I didn't. Yet. I haven't either. Why are you both the worst? Because they I, can't I, both spent, be the worst. I spent my audible token on Spears of the Emperor, and I am not regretting it. You will. I don't think so, guys. I think I think you, you guys will. just read God's Ghost at a time in your life when it really like spoke to you, and it, it just you hold I it on a pedestal. As children, no, well, no, no. They're no. Harry I, young I read God's Ghost. Was I read my Potter. first oh, Ghost <laughs> book two years ago. I was twenty five. How the there hell it is. did you have time? He to was read. a man grown. I was a man grown. <laughs> well, you see, when no, you work for no the longer. 
when you work for the government and your uh, hourly wage is provided directly with tax dollars, there's all kinds of time. Ah. And how. And how. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun fact, Battlefleet Heresy is brought to you by your tax dollars. <laughs> Look, I wouldn't go that far, but. <laughs> no, nah, for real, though. A lot of the camp, some of the best campaigns I've written was when I was <laughs> working work, in places yeah. <laughs> employed that had government. nothing to do. Yeah, we, yeah. we <laughs> won't talk about things that may or may not be stored on government S drives. Yeah, look, that government shutdown was the best thing to happen to homebrew since. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, so I guess my, what my we, work is directly. Have we already talked about pay. what we've been doing in the hobby? No, no. not yet. Do we, we may do have you talked still about do it before. that, or do you skip that usually now? It's uh, been a, it yeah, listeners. If you if you've relatively new, I'm I've been gone for a little bit, and I'm I'm sorry. My name's Will. I'll be your <laughs> friend if you want to be, but if you don't want to be, that's fine because I still like you, and I'll still be your friend. It's so a yeah, stalkerish. Thanks, thanks for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Stephen and I aren't friends anymore. What, what's Whoa. your Instagram handle again? It's Forge Breaker. Forge Breaker it? painting. It's yeah. no longer Lancaster painting. Correct. I did a name change and I had sure. somebody send me a message saying I like the old name better and I blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm an adult and I can't handle constructive criticism well. <laughs> this is America. You shouldn't ever have to listen to anyone that no, disagrees I'm with you. I'm kidding. I block. <laughs> so, Will, what have you been up to? Uh, so, Tell us. What's, what's up? What's in the life of this Forge year, Breaker painting? Uh, me going to, tw to Nova 2020 is still uncertain, which is why I'm not running any events this year. Gotcha. But I'm still gearing up as if I'm going, hopefully, as a player. So I've been retooling my mech list because th for the past three months, mm -hmm. well, since August, I've been playing pure mech. Mm -hmm. And I love the army. Like, it cool. is so... So I've been playing like a star day since I got into it as mm -hmm. Iron Hands or Iron Warriors or some other legion. And just playing as Mechanicum... Is, is just a game changer. Literally, it changes the way you play the game. Like, you have to start thinking about, uh, oh, I, 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 I can't just take armor saves anymore. <laughs> right. Because so I'm maybe only, I should be behind I only have cover. a four-up armor. Maybe I should use cover. Right. And then you're like, oh, I guess I'll go to assaults. And you're like, no, I shouldn't really assault my Thalax <laughs> into these Legatine axes. They might, or these, uh, uh, as you love to bring, the Tyrannic Greatsword. <laughs> that has... <laughs> Instant death, my, cast, what is that? The, the, the Thanatar oh, and yeah. both my Castellax in a single game. He just went and poked them both, or all three of them was like, y'all go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> and it was night night time. So I'm retooling that list because I want to make it more like Centurion mm -hmm. friendly. So I'm dropping a lot of the monstrous creatures. I uh, used to have five Castellax. I've gone down to zero. Uh, huh. I only have the one Arlatax now. I picked up some Moriax and then uh, some of the Thalax. The pew, 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 pew. Ooh, which kind of Moriax like did you uh, pick up? The lightning gun ones. Mm. So I have a total nice. of 18 Thalax now. Oh, wow. And so that's my three scoring troops. And I love them. Like, they're so fast. Being able to jump, shoot, jump is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like playing Tau again. It is. I think that's why I like <laughs> it so much, because it does feel a lot like playing Tau. Like, the Thalax really are the battle suits. Like, there's Toughness 5. They're multi-wound. Will admitted to playing Tau at one point, find his house. Yeah. Destroyed it. That's actually how I got started. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Tau. But uh, yeah, man, it's it's fun. I like nice. it. Uh, and then uh, just doing the Primaris project still. So I started mm -hmm. a little Primaris Iron Hands project, and then I've been putting together a narrative campaign for uh, the 40K community here. Yeah, you've been. And yesterday, I started in putting together an Age of Sigmar campaign for the Age of what? Sigmar team here. Yeah. Jesus. You yeah. madman. Because these Didn't people have seen... No, I don't play it. I'm just adminning it. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Has well, I do, ha I do have a corn demon army, but I have never played it. But <laughs> I might play it for the campaign I'm adminning. Who knows? Dust it off a little bit and just see what Paint happens. Paint it first. Shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So that's just me. Thank you for letting me talk about that. Yeah, you're welcome, uh, Will. It's been a while. Glad to, yeah. Glad to have you yeah. back. Yeah. We've missed you, Will. Me too. It's been fun. Without you, you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh. We fight. Damn. Austin, what have you been up to? Uh, so I put uh, almost the finishing touches on the Foltus today. Uh, my great big old demon, his creepy hand feet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the most disturbing part. Like, the whole demon is pretty bad. 
disgusting wise, right? Like yeah. I would not want to look at it in real life and I definitely wouldn't want to smell it. But I see those fucking hand feet yeah, and I just lose it. How's like, no. he going to grab me? He's just got tentacles with spikes on the hand feet. Yep. Oh my God. It's all funny games. Well, are they hands or are they feet? No, well, if it, they're if hand it makes feet. you feel any better, the fluff I have for him is that he's, it. an Ephultus is the greater big old demon nasty that Bisso sends after people that have disappointed it somehow. Hmm. So, and you don't actually have, like if you're a Bissos worshiper, one of those madmen who decides like not to, you get an Ephultus, but also because it's the Lord of bad deaths. If you're like, uh, like an extermination camp guard who's suddenly like, you know, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Nefultus. Oops. You're like a slave overseer who goes, you know, maybe it would be more efficient if I was a little less like, Whippy. Free with the whip, Nefultus. Oh. Uh, and they come chase you down. So if unless you have a change of heart and you want to be a good guy, they're like, yeah, nah, if you or even just a better guy. Yeah, like not if, even a good guy. If just you a want not to like bad guy. stop giving people bad deaths, then Nefultus. Nefultus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it chases you down. So if you're like, you know, in in Richmond, Virginia, you just run away and it'll come get you. But if you're in a space hulk, it'll just appear in a hallway. Or, like, in a room. Can it go through time also? Well, naturally, it's a demon. Okay, so it is Karnak, just, then. Yeah. It's Karnak, because that's what Karnak does. Huh. I've shit myself. Just like <laughs> but just imagine no, Karnak that. does the same thing. It's, Karnak, it's real big, right? Karnak it's is like, Korn's yeah. demon that does yeah. that. He will be given task by Korn, Korn, Korn and Korn will say, Hey, uh, go find this guy, and get a scent, <laughs> and then eat him. And then Karnak's like... Yeah, it's we'll kind of, do, dog. It's kind of similar, except Even presumably the there are multiple Nefultus running around. No, and there's only one Karnak. I think there's only one Karnak. Other, but other he summons other corn? hounds. Yeah. He, does, he summons hounds, other you know. hounds. So imagine this thing, which is like giant-sized, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's probably big. a solid 20, 25 feet tall. Yeah, it's, it's hands are the large, size of a man. The and then say. imagine it just like, you know, Jesse walks into the room, and it's just, and it's just like there. hunched over, like sitting in this room. Yeah. And then it just gets you with the feet hands. Yep. Yeah. Or, better yet, you're in this room and you see a hand reach around on the door and you're like, holy shit, it's somebody's, a, that thing's big. And then you like poke your head out and he's really like stretching and you can see a scroat and everything. And you're like, oh, yeah. I didn't expect he, those he to very, be legs. He very specifically <laughs> has no scroat. Oh. Yeah, I'm well, sorry about less that. Less scary now. Well, <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, no scroat that you can see. Yeah, smooth consider that at oh. least <laughs> <laughs> Consider that at least one of Austin's horrible demons from beyond wears pants. Really? Yeah. Wait, yours do? Only the one. Only one. Yeah. <laughs> Who sewed him pants? He's got big leather, like, <laughs> pants. Who had time to make, to, did he tan and cure the hide himself? All right. We well, remember that know. demons exist outside of time, so time is irrelevant. They were born with the pants, probably. They have both always existed it and like always existed Sounds like a cop-out excuse, if yeah. you ask me. I don't make the rules, but the pants are both before so and demons, after time. Oh God! If fucking before pants were even created by men, this demon had pants. Is what you're telling me? Even though well, all it, of uh, demons are created by the imagination of Socrates? humans, time before all time there were pants. Was it or Socrates humans or animals or whatever? The, uh, Some sentient creature. Yeah. Okay. Not, Not all like sentient creatures wear pants. Things. Exactly. In our, as we know it, humans were the first one to wear pants. As far as we know. As yes. far as we know. But Eldar, known to have worn pants. Leather pants made of rhinox hide. Back in the day. Or people hide. I think you guys are just using this whole, he was more as a lame excuse to talk about the fact that demons do have hobbies outside of murdering people. I mean, naturally. Do you think, do you think well, yeah, have, there's uh, got to be a warped deity of obsessed with hobbies. Yeah, he's like, he's like man, I fucking love arts and crafts. Who's going <laughs> to make me a wicker basket later? Do you think they have MC Thunderhammer pants? Oh shit, Jesse! Oh, what, that right was there. pretty good. Killed that there's out. a there's a joke there somewhere. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll it out. I had to bring this to a screeching halt because my god. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm my finishing. God. I'm finishing that, and then uh, I've got. But my seriously, no, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. But he does look great. He really does. Thank you. He's yeah. he's he makes me real happy. He makes me real. It's pretty cool. I did um, try to horn effect with all the spiky bits and all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, black contrast paint, and then not the actual bone color, but like a Goro stone, like the one shade darker than that. Yeah, yeah. And like apply black, apply the tan, and then mm-hmm. drag the black into the tan yes. a yep, little yep, bit yep. for a nice horn effect. So that worked. Yeah, pretty contrast well. are pretty good for yeah. easy blending like that, Walking right? Around with a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's done. 
Uh, once that's done, I will begin working on the stuff for the 30K events we're running this year. Yeah. Um, first one of those, hopefully in March, late March ish. I've got a lot of mutants to paint by then. Mm. But um, yeah. Got that. Going to start working on a board. Going to do a little ZM cave system, which should be fun. Shit, yeah. Those, those have always been an idea of mine that I would like to do, but I know I just never have time to get around to it. Yeah. I'm, so the, the plan is paint 50 Beastmen. That shouldn't take too terribly long. I've done a lot of batch painting of 28 mil in my time. Are you doing contrast with those, or are you going to do, like, a, do you have a previous scheme that you've already perfected with them? So I did 20 in contrast. And it was nothing but contrast to metallics. And it looks pretty good. I don't think it's going to end up being purely contrast to metallics. Excuse um, me. But probably like 90% of the Beastmen. And then, you know, a little dry brush here and there to kind of bring everything out. A little bit of edge highlighting. Cause they're, they're mooks. Like, they're, they're in packs of 20. <laughs> there would be a million of them. Like, yeah. You don't go crazy with models like that. I wouldn't even edge highlight them. I mean, I commend you for doing that. I mean, don't. Don't commend me yet. Okay. <laughs> just the faces. Just edge highlight the faces no, exactly. so that's, you can draw attention there. That's and that's probably what it'll be. And maybe, you know, there'll be a little freehand, like, symbols and whatnot. Sure. Um, sure, sure tattoo sure. work. Um, but, yeah, then when that's done, it's going to be six millimeter and terrain. Shit. A ton of terrain. Nice arcology sort of setup with all the rock part. And, yeah. Uh, I'm hoping mission, the first event is going to be random doubles. And then the second event is going to be Kill Team thematic, uh, pulling a lot from like the Ink 28 world mm -hmm. as far as like, it's not just, you know, good guys versus bad guys or going to be NPC shenanigans, mm -hmm. abounds. You're doing things, you know, other than just the basic move and shoot sort of actions. So, right. Because I be, think it's you, Stephen, and Jared are going to be running the events at Richmond. Yeah, so Jared, I think, is going to do more of the, I guess, like, historical stuff. Like, mm -hmm. he's doing some Siege of Terra and some things like that. Uh, this will be a totally new, you know, from from my dark corners of my brain <laughs> planet. And we're uh, going to beat the hell out of it over the next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So we're saying bye to D43 for now. I for now. It'll never, you know, may it live forever in our hearts and oh, minds. Sure. And I'm sure if Dave does more um, Ariana Forge, that'll always take place there. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know what I mean, and the Battlefleet Heresy, like we got the the maps, the maps set up. So if we ever do another Battlefleet Heresy campaign, it'll be there. And it's always fun to draw on. Good stuff. Yeah. So that's what I've been up to. How about you, Stephen? I've been having a hard time picking one project. Uh, I've been working on Moon Mice. Forever sourcing parts for moon mice, uh, building scavenging, up if you will, scavenging, if you will, yeah. scavenging. Oh, yeah. Uh, working on a second Titan Legio, which a uh, fun fact will be I'll be talking about here in a little bit with our new Titanicus segment. Um, organizing the hobby space, trying to clear out the closet of hoarding a little bit. Uh, I got the. I got the cabinet of hoarding down to a, a manageable morass of plastic and resin. At least someone is, because my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got Pat working on a uh, working on printing out some true scale Mark IV parts for me so that I can begin my long, long held dream of a true scale word bearers army. I've got a whole bunch of mark four parts got all the heresy parts got a whole bunch of in the new chaos space marine kits so as soon as i get my hands on them sweet sweet leggy bits <laughs> it's coming to town true Very scale cool. word bearers nice and that's really about it it's just lots of hobby adhd right now gotcha that's cool yeah i feel that pain i've got something like a thousand six millimeter infantry between uh, like American Revolutionary War, like World War One stuff, mm -hmm. and I just keep eyeing them. Like, well, I'll finish this project, and then I'll get to them <laughs> one day. But but then I I got this other project I need to do, and then I'll get to them. So, what about you, Jesse? Uh, let's see. So, Dave and I will be going to Adepticon this year. Ooh, ah. Damn. so awesome. it's going to be a lot of fun. This will be my first time in Adepticon, and I am super psyched about it. Um. Let's see. I know Dave is going to be going, partaking in the 
all weekend long Titanicus campaign. Good lord! Nice. And <laughs> it's, he's it's a madman. Weekend. It's so it's really in depth. There's like a twenty five hundred point roster that you pull out your uh, titans from. You have to. It's an in depth. It's a full campaign. Yes, that's what they're doing in a single weekend. Well, I mean Wednesday through Sunday, I guess, or Wednesday through Saturday. Yeah. I mean <laughs> four days. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Oh, five days. Oh, Bowser's yeah. Bowser's. Myself, I am doing Zone Mortalis on Thursday and Saturday. And that leads into a segue. I didn't realize this when I first got it, just because I love Zone Mortalis, but the Saturday game is a doubles for a thousand points each. I do not have a partner. So if you're listening oh. to this and going to Adepticon, hit me up on any of our social media accounts and uh, I can guarantee nothing. I can guarantee we'll win. I can almost guarantee you that we will lose. <laughs> but uh, I'm bringing some uh, Dark Angel boys with swords. And you'll get to play with a celebrity. And that's that's, I mean, that's the real I, I don't treasure. know if you this heard the This is the equivalent of Dancing quotes. with the Stars is what we're exactly. saying. Yeah. Doubles with the podcasters. But, uh, hit me up. It's just as bad as flirty dancing. I don't know. No, I'm getting some stuff. Have you not heard about this? Flirt dancing. Anyway. It is it is a dating show, but the first date is dancing. Uh, so it's dancing with the stars meets like The Bachelor. Ah. Uh, oh. And this I could only shit. assume it'll be real bad. <laughs> I or uh what's what was that old MTV show? I don't want to think about it. Was that it? I don't want to think about it, anyway, but I'm thinking of moving all the, on. The moving dating on. reality moving on. shows that don't yeah. exist anymore. But uh, yeah, so the I've Bachelor been, is pretty good though. Yeah, so but remember a, like a limit date and the fifth wheel and yeah. y'all basic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I got a few projects that need to be painted up. I still have to paint up the new uh, Dark Angels stuff, which is great. But yeah, I'm excited. Oh, yeah, it'll be fun. Um, are you bringing a table to Zium, or are they? Do they have enough? I'm not sure yet. You're yeah. flying though, right? I am flying. That's oh, that's the yeah. problem because lack of space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You With these new, have they started have selling the Zomor Talus no. kits individually yet? No, no they haven't yet. Uh, they keep posting up like well, these. Well, the new these. that new Necromunda won't drop until this week, next week. New Necromunda, Dark Uprising. That's yeah. been out for a few that's weeks. Been out for a while. The box with yeah, all the big boxes. Yeah. Been out for like yeah. a month. Oh well, shit. Shows yeah. what I know. <laughs> yeah, you can go down to Short Pump right now and buy yourself a box. Well, presumably not. It's kind of late. Well, not right now. And but you know, tomorrow. And it's, yeah. In the sense that Maybe anytime, because time is an illusion, and right now it may as well be tomorrow or yesterday or never. You could go to Lith Lothian and probably get it. I definitely could. Do you have pets, Stephen? Because your fucking dog will tell you when it's now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you can't just explain time like that to your dog while they starve to death. However, <laughs> if you leave, they will consider it an eternity, no matter how yeah. long it's actually been. So, all right, guys, we're getting into this now. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, are we going to do our new one, segment? What? Yeah, no. We're going to do our new segment called Dog Years. Dog Years. And this opens with a dog guitar song. Dog Years. <laughs> Talking about the motherfucking about dog ears. Dog ears. Good. Motherfucking floppy dog ears. Uh, I I can see our Patreon. Just watching list. it drop tick drop. tick. You can, <laughs> I bet if we logged on right now, we'd see it in real A time. A live stream, even though we haven't released this yet. Yeah. <laughs> they, they it's transcending time. The so, disturbance right, dog the ears. Talk about dog ears. One human year uh -huh. is seven dog ears. Allegedly. Right? That means one human minute is seven That's dog not how that works. Minutes. <laughs> nope. That's I not don't how think the math time works, works at all. What new Listen segment are you talking here, about? Listen here, you turds. Okay. So, 60 times 70. Anybody have a calculator? No, what are you doing? How dare you okay, do math in front of me, sir? Hold on. We're doing this. If it's not the simple to addition this. to make it's an army list, I want none of it. No. 4,200. <laughs> 420. 420. Yay! Hey. 60 times 70. Yes, 60 times Flame 70. So that's 100, 420 minutes. No. No, 420 that's 60 times 7. Why, no, we, no, hey. why are we doing yes. this? What is 60 minutes times 7 oh, is 420 said. dog minutes. Jesse, what's nice. this new segment you were talking about before we got wildly off track? Yeah. Remember the Titans. Oh. Remember the Titans. They walked around bipedal. Well, they were war machines be made by the by Omnisar. I can't believe I would ever actually wish to listen to Dave Matthews. They had engines made of nukes and stuff. 
they had weird religions and some weird cantankerous okay. the actions. Patreon is just remember gone. the titles. Hey, folks, it's Jesse. Quick editing note. Steven feels at some point during this segment that he mentions that a Legio can take six special rules, but you can take only four, just as a heads up. And enjoy your holidays. Merry Christmas. All right, cool. Uh, we can edit out that part later. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that in post. All righty. Oh, no so uh, it's a new Titanicus segment we're doing. I don't know how long we'll do it. Presumably as long as we can keep the magic flowing. As long as you can... Remember. Remember the Titans. <laughs> well, you did walk into that one, Stephen. <laughs> mm. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. Uh, last um, last week, we talked a little bit about Titanicus because uh, someone requested that we do more of it. So, here we are doing more of it. You asked. We listened. That's right. Back by popular demand. It's Remember the Titans. You're welcome. Yeah. So, uh... For a while now, the Crusading Legio rules have been out in White Dwarf. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's essentially a do-it-yourself Titan Legion. Which, uh... Do you have the issue number for issue? that? So we, can, it's, so we it's don't got, just buy this month's issue and be like, they're not in here! No. You don't, don't have the issue number? I don't. Wow. Yeah. Way to come prepared. We, Jesse use, and I made got, that it's, song it's got, for everybody. All right, well, it's got a picture of a Blood Raven on You know, front. I spent a whole week on that song. That it should took me narrow it down. weeks to write those lyrics. <laughs> I don't believe you. Anyway, so, um, like I said, do it yourself, Titan Legios. It is the July 2019. That is correct, uh, and it does have the Blood Raven on the yep, front, right? It's got the Blood Raven on the front. Does it have an issue number to go with it by chance? They don't do issue numbers. It's just anymore. July. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just July 2019. It's month and then year. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. Yep. So, um, you're welcome. welcome. What it's we thought digital. we would do is uh, there's there's a handful of Titan Legios that have rules. You got your your Kratos and your your Mortis and your Solaria, your Solaria and mm -hmm. your Volpa and, and so your forth. Astorum and Astorum, yes, yes. Um, but there's a whole lot of Titan Legions in the fluff in the black books in novels that don't have any rules. Like Ignatum still doesn't have rules. Ignatum right? still doesn't have rules. Yeah. Metallica, um, Metallica yeah, those doesn't the big have ones. rules. Yeah, yeah, no, there's there's some pretty hefty Legios out there that don't yeah. have rules. And yet. to be fair, there's a lot of them, so you can't expect them to all have rules, but that's what these rules right. are for. Isn't, it's for representing a Legio that uh, just... Isn't in a book yet. Isn't in a book yet. Kalth is coming out soon, isn't it? That is so. what the That's what the rumor says, yeah. is that uh, the next Titanicus book will be... Calf. You so. probably didn't hear hear it first here, folks. Thank you. You heard it here third or fourth. But hey, <laughs> yeah. But now we reminded you, and that's the whole point of this segment. Breaking news, folks. So the first thing we're going to start with um, is Legio Metallica, the Iron Skulls. I How would you is there. best represent these? So Legio Metallica is, we're going to start with a Traitor Legion, even though Metallica is. Because this is, is uh, one of the Legios that went half and half, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, Metallica split. It kept a loyalist detachment and a traitor detachment. The traitor detachment, incidentally, uh, as of the 41st millennium, has fallen firmly into the grips of the blood god. So they are a coronate titan legion. What is their name? St it's still Metallica. What? Yeah. No, because in 40k, they're yeah. Legio Metallica. They're both. How yeah. does I, the look, Imperium it's because sanction, <laughs> like, are they okay with that? It. The okay Imperium is, is a strange strong, place, my friend. It's a strong word, okay. They kind of they kind of brutally sequester all information that there's even what a traitor portion of Metallica. Wow. Metallica, guys, if you're yeah, a Metallica I mean, fan, obviously not the band. Of puppets. those traitor Legio Metallica are just some other Legio trying to shit all over Legio Metallica's good name. That's right, that's right. So with the idea that Legio Metallica being Cornate, uh, you would think they'd be melee-oriented. So the rules that I selected to represent them are indeed melee-oriented. The whole theme for Legio Iron Metallica, Skulls. Yeah, Iron Skulls. That's, that's what they, their traitor name that's, is. No, that's their nom de guerre. Their, yeah. God damn it. I hate them. I hate them so much. <laughs> uh, so the whole idea is you want to get close, and then you want to punch Titans. Yeah. So starting yeah. off the bat, uh, what I saw or what I felt was the best uh, maniple to use with them is the Corsair maniple. So the mandatory components of that is three Reaver Titans, and yeah. you can add an additional two. The 
uh, Corsair, or the, not the, bleh, the maniple trait that you get is called Fighting Retreat. And uh, it's actually the one that Austin uses a lot. It real good with his uh, with his do it yourself legion legio fidus fidens fidens fido fidens a lot of warhounds kill yourself immediately. At any rate, legio fidos. It, <laughs> it allows the titans in question to move outside of their front arc and not sacrifice any speed for doing so. So normally, basically, it turns them into like forty k models. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so normally in Titanic is to move backwards or to the side, you use, uh, you have your movement. You essentially go one inch for every two with the Corsair maniple. You can keep going full speed, even outside of that front arc. So it makes you a very maneuverable maniple. Uh, Legio Metallica can use this to effect because they will be able to keep themselves from getting outmaneuvered and still be able to charge. Hell yeah. Dude. Sweet, sweet mm. melee range. Yeah. So, Legio traits. Now, bear in mind that out of the Crusading Legio rules, you can take up to, uh, you can take any combination of Legio traits, stratagems, or war gear, but you cannot take more than two of any of them. So, for this one, our Legio traits are going to be. You mean two in total? Two in Or do you mean I no, can so take, so I you can get take. Four, you get four traits, four things, mm-hmm. right? Right. And you can take any weapon. You can use any of them. Strategy or can I take um, two weapons, two but, strategies, yes. two tactics? Yes. Now, keep in mind, all this stuff. Four, all this stuff costs you points. But you can't take three weapons. Gotcha. Okay. You can't take three traits. You can take two from yeah. each category. Up mm-hmm. to two from each category. Four in total. No, you can take six in total. I just oh. uh, rechecked those rules today. Uh, you can take them in any combination, but you cannot take more than two of each category. Okay, two of so each the, category. The specific six example it uses is two traits, two pieces of war gear, two stratagems. Oh. Now each of these do cost points or stratagems. They points, the stratagems right? cost points, but the legio traits and the war gear do not. Free war gear? Well, well, it, some war gear does, some war gear doesn't. Okay, gotcha. If you use But you're the, not mandated to take the war gear. Right, right of course. Yeah. yeah. But that, right. that's the trade-off. That's how you're able to get it is yeah. you pay points. It's mm-hmm. not just yeah. additional free rules piled yeah. on and, for everything. And some of the Legio traits are free rules. Some of them are at a cost. It all kind of mm-hmm. depends. Okay. Yeah. You guys feel they're pretty balanced? Um, Like as far as their costs? Some of the... Uh, some not, of the not traits about what are each do. blatantly better than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, like, I'm not asking about that. But I'm like, if a if a trait costs ten points, do you feel like it's worth its ten points? Well, that's that's what we're saying. It's like the traits. Some of them are, you know, they're ten points and they're worth ten points. Some of them some of them are, are like, ten points and probably worth thirty. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, they're so largely they're largely fluffy. Okay. I, yeah. I don't think they were written with I, I super say, competitive play in mind. I want to say some of them, while they haven't been banned at any events that I know of yet, there is there is talk like at at Nova, for example, um, they mentioned like, hey, we're allowing DIY legios, but you have to send in your traits ahead of time, and okay. if you take a bunch of the known super good ones, like we're gonna nix it. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. not the exact wording. Like, don't hold me to that. But essentially, don't be a dick. Titanic is a gentleman's game. Mm-hmm. I actually Sac- just did write that in um, my 40K campaign in the Age of Sigmar ones. Don't, yeah, don't be a dick. No, no, no. It was, it was, your list may be kicked back and you may be told to change everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look, you signing up for this. Presumably you, not you by pull, you with ASMR, and, though. And I was like, no, no. It'll be the, the dude who's in charge of that. But I was like, there's no reason you should have three smash captains in your fucking list. What chapter just sends out three captains on a patrol? That's true. No, even in 40K, what chapter does Space that? Wolves. Little, <laughs> Space Wolves. God damn it. <laughs> Minotaurs. Gotta <laughs> earn them sagas, man. Uh, so... For your Legio traits for Legio Metallica, again, keeping in mind that you want to get close and you want to punch Titans. Right. First one we're going to take is Motive Mastery. What this does is it gives you a plus two to your command when you are going under charge or full stride orders. Solid. Yep. And that's good all the time. All the time. And it's across the entire Legio, not just your flag engine. Reavers already don't have amazing leadership. They have good leadership. They're but they're a, not a, the same as warlords, right? They're like a right. four up on a. They're, on, they're at a f- but we're increasing a, that by a, two for. There's charges. a decent chance that a reaver can fail an order and right. screw your entire mana pool. Yeah. yeah, I mean a four is a fifty percent, right? So no. increasing on a not on a d10. Oh shit! Yeah, mm-hmm. no, y'all. Yeah, 
Thirty percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck math. So it makes it two points better if you're trying to charge and full stride, which because you want to get close and punch titans, yeah. you're definitely yeah. trying to f- charge. That, like that makes it on a two up and full stride. So you're gonna fail it at the worst possible moment. Yep. But, oh, of course. Yeah. Now because <laughs> now because your opponent is gonna see a line of five reaver titans just full tilting towards his line. He's going to put a lot of fire into them. He's going to want to target their legs. He's going to want to target the head to make it harder for them to get their orders off or just move in the direction they want to. Yeah. So for our second Legio, Legio trait, we're going to take Elite Magos. Magos? Magos? Magos. Whatever the plural of that is. And that's Magos. going to give you two things. Magos. First Magi. of all, it's going Go to give on. you plus one to your repair dice roll. You get to add one extra dice or die to that pool. So Reavers normally have three. With Elite Magos, they are rolling Warlord levels of repair So dice. when you say plus one, you mean an additional Servitor Clade? Yes, yes they okay. get an additional Servitor Clade. So now they're rolling four dice to keep shields up, to keep reactors down. Fuck yeah. Or dude. if they absolutely have to, to keep their so legs up. So you can push those reactors and that'll, to that'll get double That'll repair that power fist that yeah. inevitably gets disabled the second you're in range, mm-hmm. right? So you're uh, able to repair or, or vent heat... While you're going full tilt, while you're just double moving, yep, and yep, holy shit, holy shit, yeah. they're okay. fast and they're gonna get to you. Now, yeah, here's the boys. cool thing as well is that it also, in the event of an emergency, gives you a plus two to your command rating for emergency repairs. Solid. So, say maybe something mm. terrible has <clears throat> happened to your Titan and it's it's out of position, yeah. but it's, it's immobilized and it's immobilized, nowhere. but maybe just maybe. Your opponents are now focused on something else. Right. Maybe they're thinking, managed to hey, get that Titan into this cover. This isn't a problem the, anymore. Yeah, before the shit hit the fan. So you can shut down emergency repairs, get yourself back at least in working order to present uh, more of a threat again. Sure. And Elite Magos gives you plus two to that command. So that's what you're going to want for Legio traits. Now for War Gear, crucial to this build, you can switch out. I, I've got a couple of options here for War Gear. Uh, depending on what your preference is, but crucial is the blind missiles. You want mm. all of those reavers oh, to be packing apocalypse launchers because when you get close, you're going to start accruing or rather benefiting your opponent with accuracy bonuses. They're going to be able to charge you. The closer you get, the more dangerous it's going to be. Sure. Yeah. So you start dropping blind missiles to block lines of sight to against targets that are maybe have a good line of sight on you. Uh, targets that you're about to charge, dump just, it on yourself. Yeah, put it on yourself can to you? give yourself some. Mm-hmm. You, you can pick dump a it anywhere. Spot. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Yep. Yeah. And a reaver. reaver has got three sixty. Yep. Reaver has missile. 360 and but doesn't it still has to be need line of sight. outside of the de- the the uh, the carapace. Yeah. It just says pick a spot. Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. But I mean, just firing you, the I, weapon, right? I because was... in theory, you could set the rocket to short fuse. Launch it at a tube and immediately pop smoke in front of you. Mm. Wouldn't be dangerous. It would be dangerous, but in well, theory, not dangerous. I mean, in theory, right? Missiles in, have arming times and stuff okay, like that. In right? Real life, no one Steven. can. No one can see me, but yeah, I'm doing but air all, quotes in sci-fi it's, land. It's all a server. It's all, it's all just a rat brain in charge of it, though. It's not actual programming. So you no. just, you know, smack the rat brain. So for yeah. all intents and purposes, there's no limit to where you can put okay. blind missiles on a reaver, but they will be crucial to your Titan survival as they close the distance and get up there. Are they the like punching. smoke grenades where it's like a one-time use? It is yes, a one-use use per one Titan. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. But like, all of your Titans can take them. them. Yeah, no. Yeah. Even, mm-hmm. even my list where I only have two or three depending on the points. They're still... Huge defensive They're weapons. They're crazy good. Mm-hmm. What do you use and to represent the uh, smoke? Five inch template. It's five. Inch. It's a large blast. Oh shit! Uh, and it'll should. cover it up a be, reaver. It can be moved through, but it cannot can, be shot through. Cannot be shot through. Mm-hmm. Oh, you guys should uh, make some of those cloud things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got, I've got a couple. Now, the, one of the cool things about them as well is that they don't replace the apocalypse's regular loadout. Shit, yeah, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's you can march hit. five reavers across that table and just pound one target. Does it count as a five weapon rockets fire? at a time? Yes. yes. So this okay. this is where you get the kind of downside is that if you don't do a split fire order, the rest of your shooting is wasted, right? Because mm-hmm. you because for the blind missiles, it varies. It doesn't oh. say pick a target; it says pick a spot. But so all your other shooting, if you don't split fire, goes to the spot and not the model, so it's wasted. Mm-hmm. But, if but you because you've fire, got so because now you've got five reavers that have the launchers, you can have one reaver go on split fire order 
launch the smoke and have another reaver move up to it. You have them yeah, protecting you, each other. Generally speaking, at least again with, with my list, you don't fire all the smoke missiles at once. Shit, Normally dude. you're maneuvering well enough that you only need I to cover one or two lines of sight. Reavers don't squadron. Yep. Yeah. So I was like, so fuck, that sucks. I was like, <laughs> damn, you got to waste all your missiles. Nope. No, so, sir. Nice. Okay, yeah. So you can drop smoke on some dumb little porphyrin banner in the back that it wants gives to, that one to make your happy day. Titan who uh, broke his legs on the way there. Something to do, I guess, right? Yep. <laughs> Cover yeah. your buddies. <laughs> say it's say your opponent's deployed and say you like your opponents like me and they use a lot of warlords and they've got a just a heavy gun line screened by knights or screened by warhounds. Mm-hmm. Boop, 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 a whole line of smoke just blocking their entire site while you run up. But it's boop normally not even man. that. You only need to do one. Yep. Usually you only drop boop, you know, one, one is boop enough. at a time. Yeah. One boop at a time, maybe two. Suddenly both his warlords aren't shooting at anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything else doesn't have the firepower to kill you. Next turn, do the same thing. Shit. And then you've still got one smoke left for when you need it late game and you're in his face punching him to death. Mm-hmm. Now, it's real that's your, disrespect. Now that's your crucial piece of war gear for Legio Metallica. You've got, I picked out three others that aren't terrible. One makes, one goes more defensively with the blind missiles, and that's Ablet of Armor. Uh, it allows you to ignore the first critical hit to either the head, the body, or the legs uh, of your choice. Naturally, you want to keep your legs in good condition because you yep. got to get close. you got to punch Titans. The other two are much more suited to the second part, punching Titans. The first one is Disruption Emitters, borrowed from Legio Volpa. And what that does is it adds plus two to the strength of any melee attack that you make, which means that War uh, Reavers are hitting at strength 11 with Chain Fists and strength 12 with Power Fists. Shit, dude. Yeah. And bear in mind that if they've gotten a decent charge off, they've probably got a good number of attacks. Yeah. And called shots cost nothing. Damn! So you get in there with Eruption Emitters. All right, right cool. Uh... Four called shots to the head. Punch. Damn, son. It's not even a punch. It's just a grab and grab. <laughs> grab yeah. tear. Uh, it also... Turning heads like doorknobs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it also adds two to the scale of any Titan performing a smash attack. Oh, of which really? which Reaver gets D3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Well, everybody gets a D3. Everybody gets the D3. So you get um, D3 strength eight, right? Or will it go up to strength 10? Reaver is scale 8 or scale 6? Scale 8. Scale 8. So, so it's another D3 strength 10 on top another of Another D3 strength 10 Shit. hits you can't, on top You of can't that. call shot those. They just sort of... Right. Yeah, so but what still, you, I mean... Well, actually, so no, you can. Because they're nice, melee, right? aren't they? Yes. Take well, it back. You can. Because they're melee. Yes. So what and a lot of people of do dice, is... Man, for, yeah. What if most it's, people if do, it's an extra dice just for hitting in base contact, yeah. What most people do is... They take their smash attacks, they roll all of those first because they don't have concussive traits, so they can't knock a Titan out of range mm. with a power fist. Uh, they'll roll those randomly, or they'll aim for the weakest part of the Titan. They'll hit them all, then they'll follow up with that fist and get the execution. Is that why you don't see chain fist and power fist on Titans? Well, I guess you could do the chain fist first. So the chain fist then... doesn't have concussive. Right, it exactly. has ordinance right. instead. So I guess you could do the chain fist first and then the, the mm-hmm. fist to punch him back. You could, right? yeah. You could, but you're giving up a gun. Right. Well, Which, at that of... range, Gatling Blaster's a real good choice. Yeah. Sure, sure. People people are loath to give up both ranged weapons on the mm-hmm. arms. Mm-hmm. So Disruption Emitters is for hitting really, really hard. It yeah. basically, I mean, if a Warhound gets caught by something with Disruption Emitters, it's gone. Oh, for sure. Dunskis. Yeah. And to say nothing of Knights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just each hit is just one dead knight. Rip. Yep. Cry, eat your heart out, Serastus Lancers. Nice. Uh, the second, or rather the third, um, but second offensive war gear trace choice is cheaper in its armor spikes. And what that does is it boosts your smash attacks from D3 to D6. Which is real rude. Which is still D6 strength 8 hits from a Reaver. Holy shit. Or if you feel real ballsy and you want to get rid of blind missiles and just take disruption emitters and armor spikes, yeah, dude. you've got D6 strength 10 hits on top of your at least two power fist hits. Man. Yep. So naturally, that's a, that's a, once that's a lot of damage. <laughs> once they're in close, <laughs> uh, melee Reavers hurt. Yeah, man. Now, Stratagems is also another... Uh, variable source that you, or a variable set of options here. S- 
Three of these are stratagems that any Titan Legio can take. Most of them are out of uh, Doom of Moloch, with the fourth one being a Legio-specific one that you can take directly through War Doctrine. Okay. So the first one is Bloodthirst, and that's a plus two to hit for one strategy point, plus two to hit within two inches. For a single Titan? For a, uh, a single Titan. So if you... and plus two to command checks to charge. So if you're so already what? using mode of mastery, do they stack? They stack. They stack, but a one always fails. Right. Of course. Right, yeah. But I mean, but we're, we're still talking a if two you, up. If right? you absolutely have to get that charge off and yeah. whatever you're charging absolutely has to die because a reaver still only has a three up to hit, right? Or a four up to four hit up. weapon skill. Yeah. yeah. A four up weapon skill. So now you're hitting on twos oh. in combat with, again, your strength 12 or strength 11 combat weapon. And you've got a plus four to charge into that combat. That's pretty sick, dude. Yeah. And uh, if you got a decently long charge off, remember, you get an extra attack for every three inches mm-hmm. that you move when you charge. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a max of nine with a real. Yeah. <laughs> so bloodthirst, bloodthirst is if you've managed to get into range and you're ready to go bloodthirst is your auto delete yeah man just whatever you grabbed is dead Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh second one is a defensive one dawn attack for two cp again because of war doctrine Mm -hmm. uh and what that does is for the first two turns of the battle all titans friend and foe have the total range of their weapons reduced not by reduced to d6 times 10 the idea oh. being that it's nighttime, right? No one can see anything. Yeah. So at worst, now you've got uh, your that big fancy double bellicosa warlord. Cool. It can fire ten inches. Oh, I'm sorry. Say say the, the the roll again. What it does is it reduces all titan, the range of all titan weapons to d6 times ten. Oh shit! So at worst, ten inch range. Best, sixty inch range. Yeah. Average. 40 inch range. Yeah. Mm. That'll save you using those smoke missiles. It'll save sure. you using the smoke missiles and you can go full stride first turn. Yeah. And just run straight at them. Get into cover, do whatever you need, but you're getting there and they can't do anything about it. <laughs> uh, yes. The second, the third one for another two CP, again, War Doctrine, Gifts of the Dark Mechanicum. So this works on only one Titan. And I assume this is traders only, right? Traders only. Okay. Which, again, you're a Cornate Legion, so you're a Traitor Legion. Unless you're Loyalist. Unless but you're you said Loyalists. We're talking about the Traitors for but this But we are going right? to talk okay. about Traitors. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Gifts of the Dark Mechanicum, and what that does is you take your little stratagem card, you place it next to the Titan that's using it. It essentially gets three free reactor pushes. Every oh. time you push the reactor, don't roll the die. Just put a token on that card and advance, the, advance your, do whatever it is you need to do with it. Yeah. Uh, wow. Once it's used three times, the card's gone. Sure, but that's three full stride. You know, you can you can full stride and boost that your extra reactor. Turn you need you need an extra turn. You need to you need to back up. You need to boost them shields because again, you're going to be attracting now, a lot. Would of Would it fire. work on warlords and their bellicoses? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Yep, I mm-hmm. wouldn't suggest using it on. No, no, but I'm just bellicose. saying, like, I mean, if it works yes, every just, time, yeah. heat is increased. Mm-hmm. Any time that you would push the reactor, or even those reavers. Or warhounds, right? Like my. Oh, warhounds, you're right. They have bellicose. War- or, or reavers have bellicose. Have well, also. just just going full stride, right? Because mm-hmm. warhounds yeah. only have two dice, two Shit. servitor clades mm-hmm. to cool them. And they only have like four on the. Re- no, I'm kidding. Yeah, I mean they, <laughs> they only have four reactor points. Like, I <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I get I get real hot real fast, yeah. and that d six like that one strength nine hit to the body real hurts a warhound. Like mm-hmm. uh-huh. yep. in the past, when six, those reactor leaks start adding up. In the past six games I've played, I think I've lost more Warhounds to my own just hubris than enemy mm-hmm. fire. Perfect. <laughs> like, so uh, the third one, or the final one, is, like I said, a Legio-specific trait taken from War Doctrine, and it is Legio Mortis's March of the Dead. And what that one does is you forfeit going first. But at the start of the game, immediately, every one of your Titans can make a full movement as if it was the movement phase. So for Reavers, you essentially start six inches out of your deployment zone. Right. Think of think of it like Scout. Can yeah. you push it? You cannot push it. That's a shit. But, but it's a free but it's a free yeah. six inch movement. Yeah. So what you can do is what I kind of like the idea of is taking Dawn Attack, 
taking March of the Dead. It's an expensive alpha strike. It's five CP in total. But if you luck out a little bit, uh, enemy Titans probably aren't going to be able to shoot far enough to get you. You've just made a free six inch movement up. And as soon as your turn rolls around, you're going full stride. Yes. And that you can boost. For free, if you're using Gifts of the Dark Mechanicum for some reason. That sounds really cool, dude. This whole yep, idea yeah. is pretty yep. sick. And uh, naturally, with the Titans themselves, you want to equip at least half, uh, at least four of them with fists or chain fists. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, f- the fifth Titan, I've kind of played with the idea of being a shield breaker. You just give them the laser destroyers. Yes. Drain yeah. the, uh, well, you don't need a shield breaker for this because you're fisting them to death. It's true. You don't necessarily you'll need a shield breaker, but it's always nice to have one. That's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, even still with all the mobility, I chase I mean, somebody down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If there's war hound, I would out there, you might in, mm-hmm. in general, because you're going to be pushing your reactor so much to keep your shields up and to keep your movement fast. I would stay away from volcano cannons and massed amounts of laser destroyers mm-hmm. because you can't afford to be using up your admittedly still kind of mm-hmm. small reactor track. On your weapons. If you're a hero, you'll take a fist and the uh, and a melt a cannon. cannon. Yep. Yeah. And just let that melt a cannon determine where your mm-hmm. all your close combat attacks are going to go, and just let it because it's scattered it's a that way. Guess we're going that way, Ruined guys. People. Yep. Uh, I my personal is uh, all of my titans are going to have the Mac uh, the Gatling blaster because yeah. you're at plus one to accuracy when you're at short range and you have ordnance, so you're rerolling your ones when you're actually doing the damage. Mm-hmm. If you are doing your job right, you're inside their shields. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing your job super right, uh, you're, you're behind t- them. You grabbed a, you, you're either behind them or you targeted that big fancy warlord who now cannot bring its carapace weapons to bear because it's too tall. Mm-hmm. First world problem. Yep. But that's all I got for Legio Metallica. So, you know, blood for that dude and so on. Yeah, man. I can't wait to hear the next one. That was a pretty good segment. Yeah, uh, that was intense. That was remember probably. the Titans. <laughs> remember the Titans. Walking on two legs, we're punching to, motherfuckers in the face. We're going to have to workshop that, uh, remember uh, the that, that theme song. Remember the Metallica. The segment is dead. The segment is dead. <laughs> Never again. I hope you boys liked uh, it because that was the only one you're ever getting. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, that should about wrap it up for today. Uh, be sure to uh, check us out and follow us on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram at Remembrancers Retreat and RR30K Podcast. Be sure to check out our website at RR30K.com. Check out our Discord. Link is uh, embedded in our Facebook page. Yeah, I've been liking the Discord. Yeah, it's, it's fun been talking good. to everybody. Yeah, sharing uh, projects and that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to become a patron, check us out on patreon.com forward slash RR30K. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our patrons, starting with our Praetor tier, Alex Self, Chris Mack, Garner.Tree of Woe. Joe from Music City Heresy, Josh Phillips, and Matthew Boyce. On our Centurion, yeah, on our Centurion tier, we have Angry Boy Hates You, Derek Knoll, M. Hernandez, Minis by Applesauce, Mark Henry, and John Christensen. And our Sergeant tier, we have Duncan, Emily O'Hare, and Travis Smith. Thank you all so much. Definitely appreciate it. And uh, if you all would check your podcast chat. Oh. This is this is the Christmas season, boys, and I'm I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh god. If y'all would like to uh, <clears throat> sing along, go for it. Let's do this. Horus the dirty traitor had a very shiny ship. Oh. And if you <laughs> ever saw it, you didn't, you didn't have, have the time, time to live. Uh, all of the other Primarchs were Plus discovered him. after him. None had other had the title. Of oh, war master, master given to them. Horus the oh. dirty <laughs> traitor had a really big ego. Oh, and sorry, it's a, it's a verse. Start again. Start again. It's an extra oh. verse. It's an extra verse. Oh. So we're going to do this again. All right. With feeling. Yep. We're starting from the top? Yes. Oh, no. Jesus. Horus the, the dirty, dirty traitor had a very shiny ship. And if you ever saw it, you didn't have much time to live. All of the other Primarchs were discovered after him. None other had the title of War Master given to them. Horus the Dirty Traitor had a really big ego. 
The emperor surely foresaw it and gave Rust to kill his bro. But poor Lehman failed to kill, so his brothers had to help. Little did Sanguinius know, Horus was a demon host. Oh, how the Primarchs loathed him as they shouted out violently. Horus, you dirty traitor. All this is heresy. That was amazing. <laughs> I mean, not sung by us, but oh, I mean, no, the writing was really good. Everybody have a We'd happy... Like to thank all our former patrons. <laughs> <laughs> have a happy holiday season, guys. We will see you again next year. Inshallah. Nah, next no, we're week. Gonna do one I don't know. Who knows? At some point. We'll see you soon. How yeah. about that? Keep those dice rolling. Kicking a star days in the nuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that going to be our new Woo! tagline Mortals now for forever. 2020? We need a new tagline for 2020. No, we don't. Mortal 2020. Why not? No. We've been saying Mortal 20 whatever. We've been saying Year of the Mortal for a long time. <laughs> for the, the rest of four you years. are slackers. <laughs> we, all know what, we all know what 20, We know what 2020 is the year of. <laughs> Moon Bye. See y'all later. Mm-mm.